everyone. I'm Rabbi Elizabeth Bonnie Cohen from Congregation Kehillah Israel, and today I'm going to share with you the words of Torah that I offered this last Shabbat. So many of you know that I'm drawn to the spiritual practice of counting the Omer. The seven-week period that takes us from Passover to Shavuot in the spring has a mystical association that offer each week of this period its own opportunity for introspection and divine connection. Now, the rhythm and frame of this routinized spiritual exercise during that period of the Jewish calendar is something that I've spoken regularly about on Shabbat morning. So it likely comes as little shock that I was struck by Rabbi Hamilton's mentioning last Shabbat of the seven weeks that take us from Tisha B'Av to Rosh Hashanah. Then at Havdalah last week, Matt Goldberg echoed this notion, drawing a direct relationship to the time of the Omer. As I began thinking and learning about the second set, set of seven weeks where we find ourselves right now, I began to explore the Omer a little bit more deeply. On its surface, these two periods have little in common with one another. The Omer follows the physical journey of the Israelites through the wilderness, whereas this time leading to Rosh Hashanah is about the spiritual and emotional journey of tshuva, the process of returning to our best versions of ourselves. The Omer counts up the days until the Israelites receive the Torah and coalesce as a Jewish people. Well, now we begin to count down to a time of repentance and renewal. The Omer begins with triumph and liberation, glory and freedom, the waters part, the people walk through to dry ground in celebration and joy. They sing, they dance, they play instruments on the banks of the river. But this current seven weeks, however, begins with Tisha B'Av, an image that couldn't be more contrasted to those initial moments of liberation. Its focus instead is on destruction and pain and mourning that mark this moment as we acknowledge the tremendous loss that comes to the Jewish people with the destruction of the temple and so many other atrocities that we mark on that day. There's no singing or dancing or live music. There's certainly no celebration. But in my learning, I came across a powerful teaching from a Rabbi David Marcus that lifts up these two periods, not as parallel to one another, but rather as mirror images of each other. Rather than, folk, than moving from liberation to revelation, this current seven weeks is our spring journey in reverse, from revelation to liberation. In the lead up to our season of tshuva, we return to our beginnings. So let's unpack that a bit more. If our current season is meant to begin in revelation, what is revelatory about Tisha B'Av? As Marcus explains, Tisha B'Av focuses on what's buried in darkness. I think what he means by this is that the rituals of the day force us into confronting vulnerability, vulnerability that ultimately invites revelation. I don't know about you, but when I fast, I am much more on edge. My emotions come to the surface, my defenses fall away. My physical discomfort leaves me to confront other uncomfortable realities I may otherwise choose to push aside. Even the practice of not greeting one another on Tisha B'Av leaves us feeling more exposed. We drop the surface exchanges of, how are you? Oh, I'm fine, thanks, that often come to gloss over our true emotional experiences. And we sit in hushed spaces that leave our internal monologues revealed. And this is a hard entry point. Mar Marcus acknowledges that Tisha B'Av can be jarring and even turn people off. We don't always like what we see when confronted with that which is revealed in vulnerability. We prefer to avoid dark spaces. And if we must venture into the darkness, how quickly we seek comfort. Perhaps he says, for that reason, these seven countdown weeks to Rosh Hashanah are called the weeks of comfort. We seek reassurance that it will be okay, that we will emerge from this journey to look up, perhaps not at the splitting sea, but rather at the gates of spiritual renewal open wide to us. This is the liberation that awaits us seven weeks from now. The regular spiritual practice associated with the Omer can also be a powerful mechanism to guide our journey from now until Rosh Hashanah focusing on a different divine attribute each week as we reflect on the past year 
and set intentions for the year to come. During the Omer, we typically begin with the attribute of loving kindness or chesed, and we move towards that of sovereignty, malchut. But during this time of tshuva, we turn that process around as we seek to return to our fullest, most sacred sense of self. Therefore, we start with the sovereignty of malchut and move towards chesed, the mercy and compassion that will open us most fully to the liberation we seek on Rosh Hashanah. So let's talk for a moment about Malchut, where we find ourselves right now. Malchut is about revealing divine sovereignty that exists within us. It's about recognizing the unique sacred contribution we can each make to this world. In this week of Malchut, Tamar Frankiel suggests that we take five to 10 minutes each day to reflect on that which we've accomplished or completed in some way over the last year. These could be in any area of your life, she says, your personal well-being, finances, relationships, house and home, studying, volunteering, creative projects, repair projects, employment, travel, think broadly. She challenges us to add at least one new thing to this list every day. In this exercise, the first step as we prepare ourselves for the new year is to reflect on this past year's journey. So in a world constantly demanding more and more and more, pushing us to feel perpetually unsatisfied, only ever looking ahead to what's next, where have you experienced a sense of completeness? When has that divine spark that's unique within you contributed to a sense of wholeness? contentment, satisfaction. Give yourself permission to recognize that, appreciate it, and take pride in those moments of fulfillment, no matter how big or small. May the revelation of these moments be a source of strength as we begin this journey to Rosh Hashanah. And finally, in reflecting on this time, Rabbi Marcus says that spiritually speaking, we wake up and fall asleep again and wake again. Something jolts us to attention. We return to our souls only to find that our souls have been waiting all along. So my blessing for us today is that the rhythm of the Jewish calendar can help jolt our spiritual attention. May these seven weeks be an opportunity to engage with the process of renewal that will ready us for spiritual liberation that the new year will bring. May we find comfort in the promise of that liberation awaiting us, and may we return to the sacredness within ourselves that our souls long to reveal. Shavuot Tov.